All right, so allegedly, I'm naturally funny. I don't know if you guys are trying to call me funny looking or... What's going on with you guys? The Cali Effect King of Games here. And today, we're going to be going over the top five Yu-Gi-Oh! decks post-Blazing Vortex. Now, as disappointing as the Blazing Vortex set is in total, there are actually a few strategies that make out like bandits and get 10 times stronger with this particular set. Of course, in this video, I'm not only going to be giving you the 411, like, who says that anymore? On these particular decks, I'm also going to be breaking down why they are good, as well as a few weaknesses that you could exploit if you aren't playing these decks or if you're playing against these decks to be able to win. So, of course, if you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to destroy that subscribe button, but also be sure to hit that notification bell because, well... We just too strong. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Now the first strategy on this list is a strategy that is going to follow over from the best deck of the last video to this video. It has changed just slightly. The Drytron strategy is a ritual based strategy, if that's what you really want to call it, which revolves around tributing other Drytron or ritual monsters to summon themselves from the hand or graveyard. Also, Ritual Summoning with this deck is not based off of the level, it's based off the attack. So you can summon really powerful monsters like Herald of Ultimateness using one level one monster. Now tell me how's that fair? I swear, Konami is like the worst person to be in a relationship with. They tell you, oh, you can't Ritual Summon unless you need the level. Then turn around and say, nah, that was a lie. I'm just Ritual Summon use an attack. Now, not only have I evolved into saying Drytron instead of Drytrin, the Drytron strategy has evolved into a Vanity's Ruler type Herald of Ultimateness deck, but sometimes can either play just Herald of Ultimateness or Vanity's Ruler. Both of these cards are extremely popular, whether it's stopping your opponent from special summoning or having multiple negates in the form of one card. But the main component for this deck is Cyber Angel Benton, because anytime this card is tributed, you can add a fairy monster from your deck to your hand. This, of course, not only allows you to search into your Herald or Vandy's Ruler, but also allows you to keep activating your Drytron monster's effects, which means you can summon a plethora of monsters to your side of the field for Link plays. People forget that this deck can Link really well. Now, at first, the big weakness for Drytron was to stop them with cards like Dimensional Barrier, but now we realize, just hit the graveyard. Since the deck is just so adept to Linking instead of Ritual Summoning because it... It will like ritual summon twice. But using cards like DD Crow and Ally Adjust as Psycho Reader to prevent the Drytron monsters from activating in graveyard or to prevent certain cards from activating in graveyard when they are tributed is probably your best bet to defeating the strategy. You could say those Trons will be dry without a graveyard. Yeah, I went there. The next strategy feels as if it came completely out of nowhere. This was a deck that was on no one's radar, including myself, and now I consider it as one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Not only that, it does get two new cards in the Blazing Vortex set, which just so happened to help summoning Barrier Statue and protecting it. The tri Brigade strategy have risen from a deck with tons of potential to a very serious contender inside of this meta. Basically, the concept of the deck is to get Beast, Beast Warrior, and Winged Beast monsters in the grave yard, allowing you to special summon Link monsters from your extra deck to your side of the field by banishing them. Yep, it's not a Link summon, you just special summon them to your side of the field. Meaning that you can summon Link monsters that you're not supposed to with this deck. Pairing this deck with Lyralusk not only gives you a level 1 engine, but allows you to supply your graveyard with a ton of Beast, Beast Warrior, and Winged Beast monsters, so you can summon cards like Apollosa, Bow of the Goddess, and of course, the Samork monster that we all love, which allows us to summon our hefty Barrier Statue monster. Because Barrier Statue is, um... That win card is hard to get over sometimes. Now, just when you thought, oh, you have negations on the field and I can't special summon? Well, well I'll just attack over a forehead. That's not how tri Brigade works post-Blazing Vortex. tri Brigade Kit allows you to send a tri Brigade card from your deck to the graveyard when it is sent to the graveyard, and tri Brigade Rendezvous allows you to banish itself from the graveyard to protect a Beast of Beast Warrior Winged Beast monster on your field. In essence, it's not gonna get destroyed by battle very easily. 
Now, Tri-Brigade isn't without its weakness. The current line of hand traps like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion work really well against this deck. But also, if you can play around Barrier Statue, you can be pretty well off. And seeing that the Brigade strategy really needs its graveyard, cards like Dimensional Shifter and a different Dimensional Ground can completely prevent the deck from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, ironically, we're moving away from that control format that we were in in January and December towards more of a combo-based format where decks can even play through hand traps or Nibiru, sometimes both. It gets pretty disgusting. Fortunately, one thing that combo decks cannot play around is Shut All Winda, meaning that Shut All Dogmatica Invoked is a really good deck. I don't really know what to call it. This is a combination of multiple decks as Shadals can actually play really well by themselves. They can also play with Dogmatica and Invoked, and Invoked can play with Dogmatica, or Invoked can play with Shadal, or it can play with Dog. You, you see where I'm going here. But basically, no matter what variant you're playing, the premise of this deck is Shadal Winda. It prevents the opponent from special summoning more than once. In a combo format, that's going to be really hard for your opponent to do, seeing that they really want a special summon. The deck also summons some very fierce monsters like Invoked Mechaba, which not only allows you to negate some of their most important monster effects, it banishes them, and a lot of times they don't want their stuff banished either. Dogmatic has come in as a very good complementing piece, not only allowing you to send certain cards like App Cologne from your deck to the graveyard, or your Titan Clad to be able to search more Dogmatica cards or Shed All cards, they provide a very good source of disruption through Floor Delete or Punishment, allowing you to negate an opponent's card or destroy an opponent's card. And the best thing? They're light monsters. So of course the aforementioned Mechaba is always a viable target, but so is Shadal Construct, which doesn't get enough credit. That allows you to destroy a special summon monster that it battles. That can come up when your opponent is really banking on the attack to be able to carry them through. Call it however you want it, but Shadal Dogmatica Invoked has actually gained footing into the meta just because there's so many good combo decks. So indirectly, it got support from Blazing Vortex. It's going to be shadowing strong decks at a blazing fast speed to uh make it to another vortex i don't feel good about that one can i do this one over no i, I gotta put that one in there now there is a strategy that got support in blazing vortex that wasn't exactly what players wanted or expected but to be honest with you guys outlitch is not only a top contending deck that support is kind of good for the outlet strategy I actually want you to revisit Outlitch the Mad Golden Lord, the level 10 fusion monster with 3800 attack whose effect reads, you can tribute one zombie monster, target one face up monster your opponent controls, take control of it, but it cannot attack or activate its effects this turn. You can only use this effect of Outlitch the Mad Golden Lord once per turn. Now, Outlitch the Mad Golden Lord does make you scratch your head because it's not necessarily for a hybrid Outlitch deck, but with the Forbidden List looming around, I can expect that that will be addressed. But even without Forbidden List talk, Outlitch the Mad Golden Lord is Outlitch the Golden Lord on the field. There were plenty of times where you actually want Outlitch the Golden Lord off your field into the graveyard so you can resummon, and this card provides you a way not only to get one steal on the field, but to put one into the graveyard to summon back to your side of the field. Did I also forget to mention that it's over 7,000 attack between those two cards as well? And the card that makes this all happen is Seven Realms of the Golden Land, an ultra rare continuous spell card out of the Blazing Vortex set, whose effect reads, during your main phase, you can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using zombie monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. You can target one set card in the spell and trap card zone. It cannot be activated this turn. You can only use each effect of seven realms of the golden land once per turn. So not only is this card searchable, it allows you to fusion summon with zombie monsters. It also can be sent to the graveyard to bring back your outlets to golden lord you just lost, which can be attributed to take control of one of your opponent's probably problematic monsters. Yeah, these cards aren't that bad. The weakness of Outlitch is being able to either A, prevent them from banishing those trap cards, or B, banishing those trap cards before they can get their effects. Of course, cards like DD Crow and Skullmeister can hit particular cards, but if you actually use cards like Ice Dragon's Prison on Outlitch to Golden Lord, that can be a problem for them. Outlitch has evolved into a trap-based control deck that needs Outlitch the Golden Lord on the field to be able to activate cards like Wakaro and Conquistador, which are very good Yu-Gi-Oh cards. 
Don't take the fusion and the new spell card from the Blazing Vortex set lightly. There's some pretty good cards. In the last strategy, I feel has superseded Drytron as the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! Blazing Vortex only is the icing on the cake. The virtual world strategy is insane right now. Have you ever made your opponent skip their turn? Well, I mean, you can do it in the form of True King of All Calamities. True King of All Calamities is a card that probably should be banned and we can expect to be banned on the next Forbidden list. But until then, it allows you to negate all of your opponent's cards of the declared attribute. And typically, you can make True King of All Calamities without fearing the Biru in the virtual world strategy. What makes it worse is that the virtual world strategy is actually taking on three new cards for the Blazing Vortex set, one being Virtual World Gate Zanwu, which allows you to special summon a free virtual world monster from your graveyard to your side of the field. There's literally a two card Calamities combo now that this card exists, thank you. And then there's Virtual World 2-2, which isn't played in every single Virtual World deck, but boy, this card's actually good. It can normal summon itself as a level six and it works like Nyan Nyan being able to special summon itself from the graveyard. All you have to do is discard a worm or psychic monster. Those two cards really help the virtual world strategy, but the third card ensures that virtual world will still be a top deck even if true king of all calamities does get banned. Sacred Tree Beast Hypertron is a rank nine monster that just requires two level nine monsters whose effect reads, during your turn when you activate a card or effect, you can target one card of the same type in your graveyard and attach to this card as material. During your opponent's turn when a card or effect is activated, you can detach one material of the same type from this card and if you do, negate the activation. And if you do that, destroy that card. You can only use each effect of Sacred Tree Beast Hypertron once per turn. This card already comes in hot with the ability to be able to negate monster effects, but depending on how you pimp it, you can make it be able to negate spells and traps depending on the matchup. Boy, this card is a headache. The virtual world strategy is just way too good, way too powerful to fall off the map, even with the banning of true king of all calamities, but this deck is with its weaknesses. If you can get rid of the card that the virtual world monster wants to target in order to summon itself, its effect will fizzle, meaning that they won't be able to gain its effect and summon it to the side of the field. And cards like Artifact Lancia prevents them from banishing, something that they really like to do on their own accord. Now again, I genuinely do think that the Virtual World strategy is the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, but I want you to post down below in the comment section what are your top 5 decks for this format. Well, that's all that I have for the top 5 Yu-Gi-Oh! decks post the Blazing Vortex set in the February 2021 Forbidden List. This sounds like so many stipulations, it's like an NFL record stat. Oh, Tom Brady won the most games when he throws with his left hand on a Sunday that he ate oatmeal on and yogurt. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a like as well as check out these others as I'll catch you on the next one.